So you might think I'm gonna say less water, use lighter jigs, but that isn't actually always the case. It's actually kind of the opposite because when the water's lower like this, you're gonna target those deepest holes in the deepest pools in the whole river and using a half ounce or using a 3 8 ounce is a lot of what I'm gonna be using just purely because a lot of those shallower runs that when there is more water are gonna have fish moving through them are just not gonna be super fishable in this kind of conditions. But that being said, there are some holding pools that are small enough water to warrant using something like this, which is the exact same or similar pattern to that nightmare I was using earlier, just tied up on a quarter ounce jig head. Usually I'd switch to like big to small, big to small, but I'm putting on basically my biggest tied jig I have. Just a big old nightmare. <sighs> yep. Let's give her. Yep. Maybe those fire trucks will like the colors that. That's a fish. Yep, that's a fish. First cast with the nightmare. Nice chrome buck, or chrome coho, I don't know if it's a male. Might have saw a kite, wow, he's coming over here. Yep, you wanna grab the net? On the nightmare. Don't do that, don't go into that shallow water, buddy. That's not what I want. Oh, he's not quite as big as I thought but very chrome, beautiful fish. All right, little dude, there we go. Not bad at all. That's a nice fish, man. Yep, and he's hatch. Man, I wish it was opening time. First fish of the day here. See ya. Yeah, let's see what happens. And that was not very close to the bottom, pretty aggressively twitched. <laughs> what was that? Oh, I just got hit twice. I didn't think that first thing was a hit, but it definitely was. Damn. There he is. He followed it all the way in, and that, I think that might be the same fish. Legitimately, I had three hits all the way on the way in. And I think it was all this same fish. This is the opposite of what I want right here. Come on, buddy, take a run. Is this the same fish? Like, what is going on? This is like the same size. Same, this is a real quick fight here. Possibly maybe you wanna try and net him right there. Perfect, there we go. Exact same fish. Not really, but that is, well that's another hatchery. Two in a row. And it's like a few days till you can keep hatcheries. Wow. All right, we are not even gonna take Buddy Guy out of the water. We're just gonna show him off right here, like this. Nice chrome, again, hatchery. Man, I wish it was time I could keep these. Oh, we gotta get a picture of this one. Poster up on the Instagram. That's a beauty right there. Just a freaking Mondo. Let's send her on her way. I think that fish was a little smaller than the last ones, but I just had a coho strike right below me really? and just immediately start rolling. Yeah, I saw it. It was like a, I don't know, three pound coho that just struck my giant <laughs> jig. In terms of jig patterns, I like my chartreuses. I like pink a lot, that's probably number one, and obviously Nightmare, as you saw earlier, works. But in general, specifically for low clear water, I like darker colors a lot, so maybe a two-tone, black and pink, 
black and green or black and red like was used in this video. No! Oh man, I was not expecting that at all. Like I was just saying in low water, you can get fish on spoons and spinners, but man, I was just casting this spoon all the way across the, uh, the river here and I just got hammered by a coho that I just unfortunately lost. Man. Whew. So like I was saying, you do want to target the most deep, good looking holding water, but if you're in a situation like this where there is some amount of holding water, even if it's not nearly as deep as the stuff up there, in a long stretch like this, I would say put your time into the deep spot up there like we did, and then, like I'm doing right now, take a few steps, cast, take a few steps, cast, and just work your way down the, uh, the pool here. Man, that was a really good go. -o. Or not, maybe not quite a jack, but yeah, no, that's a jack. Are you letting it sink for very long? Um, not up there, no, because I was casting into the, uh, the, like, the headwaters of the pool. He is wild though, so I wouldn't be able to keep him even if he was under 30, I don't think. So we are now at a lower stretch of the river here, and even in low water, you can get fish in fairly shallow seams, like right there across, but again, in a second here, I'm gonna be showing you the kind of holding water you wanna look for. The good spot is directly under that tree. It looks like nothing. That backwater right there is where you wanna cast into. Yeah, so this is our last hurrah here, eh? This is our last hurrah. This is this is where you gotta get a buzzer beater fish. Yeah, tell me more. So just cast directly under that tree. I'll see if I can get it out there. As far as you can get is a chance. Like I've you could definitely get one there. But you might want to switch to a quarter ouncer. I think so too. And I would definitely keep it away from the bottom because I'm seeing like hordes of chum at the moment. It might, we might just have to throw like a spinner in there if, like with how many chum I'm looking at. Which is not a bad thing because you can huck a spinner out there pretty good. Oh my god! Cast in there again, cast in there again. Big coho just waked on it. Oh my god! That's actually perfect. That's literally exactly where he went. Holy shit, that was big. That's a perfect example of why you don't stop oh. until it gets to the bank. <laughs> he, I looked back at you and I was done fishing. He almost blew up on it like a topwater lure. I thought it was a chum following it at first, but then he turned after he hit it and just big silver flash. All right, what we're looking at now is what I was talking about earlier. Some much more typical holding water. You can see downstream of it, we have a shallow tail out that goes into a fast run. And then right here, kind of a fairly deep, very, very slow pool that kind of forms a nice feature in the form of that point right there. And that's a good tip for coho in any water, low or otherwise, is fish cover. Whether it's a point that juts out like that, a log that goes into the water, they will hold in places that don't have cover, but it's always a big bonus. Probably should have done this earlier, but I'm now gonna go over a little bit more detailed of what I'm actually doing. So in water like this that is fairly deep, not quite as deep as the real big holding pool we were fishing upstream, but it's very, very slow. That's the main difference. Upstream, there was a little more current, so we were using half ounce jigs and 3 8 ounce jigs exclusively. In this pool, I would definitely say, in this water level, I'd go with quarter like I'm using right Right here or a 3 8 would work well too if you really want to be sure you're on bottom. With a quarter ounce like this I'm letting it sink for a little while longer than I would with a 3 8 And although I like the cover of the deep water it's always worth making casts all the way through the pool. Making a couple steps, taking another cast, couple steps, another cast and uh, tail outs are also even in low water always a decent bet. But yeah, there's some of the basic tips I use when low water fishing. And although today we didn't do amazing, low water fishing can often be like this. You can just feel like everything is desolate and nothing is happening at all for two, three hours straight. And then all of a sudden in two casts, you get two fish like I did earlier today. And because in situations with low water, there's such high water clarity, as you can see very, very clear, the almost fish Kyle had 
was something that's very typical. You may make two, three casts into a spot, especially a smaller spot that may only hold a few fish. And more than likely, if you are gonna get some action, it's gonna be within those first few casts. Anyway, that's pretty much it for my little bit of tips and tricks and this little day of fishing here. Oh, there's, that's, that's a coho. Really? Yeah. I already made a cast in that exact spot. That is an unexpected buzzer beater right there. Am I recording? I am. No way, man. Chum. That's a chum. That's like a really good condition chum. Not silver, but that's like a good quality chum. Yeah, I think that's, I think you're right about that. Oh. See you later. That was like almost a silver chum. That was like a nice chum. That was a really nice chum. Like I, would, I would have even been happy to catch that fish. That just hammered a spoon. What are you fishing? The spoon. <laughs> he hit it on the surface. I'm happy it wasn't a cola though, because that would just be like, yeah, the... that would have stung so bad. Extra special thanks to Dustin Hopkin, Chris Colley, and Henry Cole as this month's Tier 3s. If you want to become a patron like these wonderful people on the screen, it is the best way to support my channel. Other than that, thank you for watching.